Let's st just stand and look to the Lord this morning. Any prayer requests before we begin? Sister York? Yes, both brother and sister York as well. Oh, your, your friend as well, okay. Okay, and your sister as well. All right, let's... Your stepdaughter. Okay. Let's all lift up our voice to the Lord. Heavenly Fathers, we come before thee. Lord, the needs is great, but Lord, you are a great God. And Lord, we ask this time that you would lay your hand upon these requests that has come before thee. Lord, meet the needs, I pray. Lord, not only those that are in here, but Lord, by the way of the internet as well. Lord, even the unspoken requests or the things, Lord, that you know every thought that we have. I just pray, Lord, that you would meet us in this service and we commit it now in your precious name, in that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray, amen. Praise the Lord. You can be seated this morning. So um, I'm going to ask Paul Obey to come. And yes, we had a flood, but it wasn't Noah's flood here, so. And the one that's talking was the one responsible. <laughs> so you don't hear rumors, okay? Praise the Lord. Good to see everyone. I'm thinking the carpet probably needed a good cleaning anyway, and we got her clean, friend. Yes, for everyone here this morning, we have a baptism this morning. Sarah's getting baptized, and uh, it's pretty exciting. Praise the Lord. The Lord is still moving. Thank you, Lord. What a beautiful day for the Lord.
grateful for mercy this morning. That it did rewrite my life because I was going in the wrong direction. And uh, he just reached down and edged me along the right path. And it took a little while, but he got me on the right path. And, uh, you never give up on someone. You never know what's in store. Thanks. Thanks. I'll give you thanks. song upon their hearts this morning?
can do uh, 176 just down the, maybe just do the chorus. The is your always in dry places he makes flowers grow is you song, Jenna, this morning? Do you have a song? No. 
read my Bible and wow, what a beautiful touch your heart scripture. And we was around the house there that morning and there was somebody at the door and I went to the door and it was Jehovah's Witness. And I don't know why they come back because because I don't give them any room to talk. <laughs> no, because I want to express to them the gospel. Yeah. Because they've got a man-made thing, and they don't leave any room for an experience with Jesus Christ yeah. and with the Spirit of God. And when you try and talk to them about that, and I made up my mind, what's the sense of beating around the bush? But anyway, there it was, and he handed me a, or he tried to hand me this piece of paper, and he, he was a new fellow, and I'm, I suppose he was in training, and they sent him, I don't know what this was, but, and he said, I just want to invite you to our church to celebrate the death of Jesus. And in my heart, my mind was someplace else, because I was thinking about his resurrection. Yes. Because Paul said, if there's no resurrection, there's no home. Yes. And the question, I was thinking about this this week. Where is Jesus? And the answer is, where two or three are gathered yes. together in my name. I know people, and they're a lone wolf, and they don't gather anywhere, and, and, and maybe they have some success, and I hope they do. But I have great success with my God when I gather together with his people, and when I begin to worship him, and when he comes, because he's in the midst of his people. And he comes to me, and he ministers to me, and I appreciate him. And he's a great God. Anyway, the scripture that I read that morning, when the Jehovah's Witnesses came to my door, and, and I've, I've read this scripture how many times? Dozens, hundreds of times. The first chapter of Revelation, and unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood. That was so powerful to me. And, and I, I told the Jehovah's Witness, I said, I'm going to my own church and I will celebrate Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Brother Eli, do you have a song this morning? Thank you, Lord. Yeah. 
Brenda, do you have a song this morning for us?
Well, praise the Lord, everyone. I'm thankful that Jesus is still on the throne of mercy. He's still calling on hearts. And I'm thankful that he is patient. And our sister has desired to walk with the Lord and to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's a wonderful thing. I'm sure you can remember when you got baptized, how your sins of the past were washed away. You felt light as a feather, praise the Lord. Just that knowing you're fulfilling God's word is, is a wonderful thing. And uh, praise the Lord. I thank for my sister here this morning and beautiful little baby girl and her husband there getting ready. I don't know if she wants to go in the water. She's looking at it, but, <laughs> but that, that's besides the point. So, so now, at this time, Sarah, I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, that you may, the promise you may receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Continue on, Brother Paul.
Because of the flood. So thankful for the Lord's mercy this morning and what he's done for us and where he's brought us from. Oh, Paul and Silas were locked in a jail. It was along about midnight the Holy Spirit prevailed. Well, the earth started shaking. They began to sing. The feet were free. My God delivers in the darkest hours. My God delivers with His mighty power. Well, He's done it before, and He'll do it again. My God delivers from the wages of sin. Trouble me. Often relate the natural walk and the spiritual and the relationship with a father and the son. And it's been many times the wee hours in the morning on weekends through the past years that I knew Jeremy was out and and uh, living the life of the world and. often was up in the wee hours just thinking 
of his safety. And uh, you hear so many stories, and uh, especially being out there on snowmobiles and four wheelers and coming home intoxicated. Some people are just found on the end of a trail and passed away of a serious accident or not. But there's been many times that that I was awake and, and dwelling and it and I called upon the Lord and it seemed many times that within minutes all of a sudden I would hear the vehicle pulling in the yard and that I was able just to put my head at rest and say he's home. And I often relate that how our Heavenly Father can, I know he thinks it's the same way. Many times I failed him and I know that he has a great patience and a love for each one of us. And, and I can relate that with my own children. It's just for me, it's certainly things are out of my hand, but in God's hand, all things are possible. And there, uh, like I said, there's been many times just shortly after praying that the, the vehicle rolled in or he walked into the house. And I just, just so thankful that he, he hears our prayers and he can wake us in the wee hour of the morning and, and it's to recognize that it is him. Amen. As I was reading different parts of the book, I really find this, I'm trying to really find this hard to try to express it, but there was something, there was something that got a hold of me, and I knew that somewhere in my study room that I had a, a video. And I went downstairs and I tried to find it. And I did find it, and I, I never listened to the video before. But as as I read, I thought I gotta I gotta listen to this video. And this video is called the Embrace, the Journey, 
that something transpired in 1999 when our Prime Minister of Canada, Pritchard, he went to visit Israel, that very place where the monument is, where the, where the Jews recognize these Gentiles. And I'm sure all of you have heard about uh, Schindler's List, yes. Yes. and his name is there. But that was a, 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 a starting point, what transpired in 1999. And then, uh, three or four years later, there was a gathering. What had happened in 1939, there was a ship that had come across. Had come, and there was 900 Jews on this ship. It was called the St. Louis. The ship was called the St. Louis. And, but wherever that <coughs> ship went, it was rejected. They went to Cuba, they would not accept them. They went to the United States, they were not accepted. Came to Canada, Canada didn't accept them. What? Come to find out, our Prime Minister at that time, he was anti-Semitism. His name was Prime Minister Blair. And what had transpired, uh, in 2003, The nation of Canada, all the Christians had gathered together in Winnipeg. There were 3,000 people, Christian people, religious people, denominations, and the Jewish council that had gathered together. And on the video, I'm watching this, and people are weeping, and they're crying, they're lamenting, they're crying out to God, and they're asking God, to forgive them as a nation because they did nothing to help the Jews at that time. And I'm watching this and, and I know it's genuine. This, this is not something that it's, it, they were putting that on. I really believe that this element of people, when they had come to the understanding that they had rejected this, this ship and all these Jews, that they were crying out to God and asking God to forgive them for not helping the Jews at that time. And when Christian, when the Prime Minister Christian went to Israel in 99, he brought a declaration from the government of Canada that they declared, Canada declared that they would never again, never again refuse the Jews. This individual, this individual that made the, uh, the DVD, he was at that meeting. He was an Egyptian Christian. And the Lord began to deal with him and speak to him. And it's, 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 to me it's very exciting because it's leading up to something that I never, like sometimes you, you, you hear things and you think, that yeah, sounds good, but is it really the word of God being fulfilled? And I really believe that it is the word of God being fulfilled. And it happened in 2003, and I wasn't even aware of it, but I, I believe that God is preparing a place in Revelation 12, verse 6. God is preparing a place for the Jews that they will flee to, that God has prepared. Amen. And this took place, all this took place in 2003, where this individual, he was among them, and he, he was just overwhelmed by the people how they were crying out to God and asking God uh, for forgiveness. And the Lord spoke to him and said that for him to contact any survivors that was on that ship. And there were 50 that had survived the concentration camp because when they were rejected they went, they went back to Europe and they most of them died in concentration camps by the Germans. So, he contacted one guy, a Jewish that lived in Canada. He went to visit with him, talked with him, told him about, you know, as a nation, that he felt, he felt that he wanted the Jews or the survivors to know that Canada was really, was repenting of what they had done. And they were truly sorry for what they had done. And so, to make a long story short, 
the Lord began to work with them and deal with them, there were 50 of survivors that came to Canada. And they, they met in Ottawa. They were presented uh, plaques and, and everything. But the Jewish people, the rest of 50 survivors that had come, they were so overwhelmed what they saw and what was transpiring. The people of Canada, the ones that really was concerned, <coughs> and I believe that God was really in this. Amen. They said, the Jewish, this one woman said, of all the nations, Canada is the only nation that openly declared their repentance towards them. The 900 that was on that ship. Now, I'm just saying Canada was the only one, so far, of all the nations, that made that declaration. And when I was watching this video, all of a sudden it, it came to my mind. Brother Jackson had preached about this woman fleeing into a country, into the wilderness. And I, you know, and I, and I believe that what he was expressing, but to me, like, after seeing this video, and, and watching, uh, you know, Canada, the nation, the people, getting to the place where they, there was a true repentance towards the Jews. And to me, it's, uh, it's probably just, and you're, you'll say, well, uh, we know it's going to happen again. There is going to be another persecution in Europe and the Jews, but the, the Antichrist is only going to have, in that area, and to have the power in order to, and that's why when God is preparing a place for the Jews to flee, I, prepare, I, I believe that God has already prepared it. Yes. And it, like I said, that event took place in 2003. And I wasn't even aware of what was really going on. So I thank God that the Word of God is going to be fulfilled. Amen. And I'm, I'm, I'm just so thankful for what God has shown me. I think we need to uh, address a few things. If you have testimonies, do it during the song service, not when the song service is ending. It's getting into the service. And it's more proper that way. I don't see it in other places. And it should be also here, too. I'm not stopping testimonies. Please testify. But there's plenty of opportunity in the full hour to testify during that time, because right now it's a quarter to, to 12. So if you have your Bibles, I want to go this morning to the book of Acts. Sometimes it's good to review the things that the Lord has done for us in the, in the sense of, uh, and sometimes we forget some of the simple things that what the Lord has really done, like Brother Roger's testimony about concerning the blood of Jesus Christ, how important that is. And on the day of Pentecost, in the book of, book of Acts, in chapter 2, verse 38, very familiar scripture, it says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, that ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I'm glad that he's promised the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, the reason it's promised, it's because why does a person go to get baptized to begin with? And to be baptized, you have to know the revelated word of God concerning baptism. You go to the different denominations and they look out upon it, well, does some sprinkle, some it's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, some doesn't make any difference to them, but it does make a difference to the word of God. Because then you're just fulfilling the words of a preacher. But when you see it in the word and the Holy Spirit makes it real to you that you're baptized, that your sins in the flesh is gone, what a day. I know, sister, I didn't put enough warm water in, in the tank. 
There was a lot of water this week. <laughs> but but uh, you don't have to worry about that because I remember way back in 74 uh, when time, there's a time to be baptized. God puts that hunger on the person. You don't have to say, well, it'd be nice if you get baptized or not. God puts that hunger there. And for me, it's when Brother Jackson come down and had ministered here in Moncton and it wasn't his message about baptism, but the minute he mentioned that word, it was just a draw. And then I said, well, and then the meetings were over and I had moved. So when he went to St. John, I said, if he says that again, I'm going to the water. And so there again, we, this was in December the 15th, for Brother Neil, he had to put hit waders, even the hit waders were kind of cold in the, in the, uh, in the river. But it didn't matter how cold it was, it was the joy knowing of that fulfillment that you're fulfilling God's word, not because someone said there, it's right there in the word, your sins that was done in the, in the past, the things we committed. Now it does not erase our sinful nature because then that's what the blood of Jesus Christ is there for. And there too, when the Lord calls us to, to walk in his way, that blood is just as powerful in the, when you've when you seen it till the day you leave this world. Because God sees you through that blood clean. Now that's referring to the child of God. And God knows who actually has received it by revelation. And again, in, in a, a, I quoted to the sister this morning concerning the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 10. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him that this man stands before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught speaking about Christ, which has become the head of the cornerstone. Neither, now, I wish the Trinitarians or the different denomination that baptize in, in, in the titles would read this. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name. Not titles, name, and it's singular. Under heaven were, under heaven given amongst men, whereby we must be saved. So I'm thankful for the Lord, for his word. It doesn't get complicated. God doesn't require for you to be a university degree to understand these things. Sometimes God just puts that hunger there to draw you to do it. Then it's him. And he will fill in the blanks of the things we need to understand. We don't understand everything when we got baptized or when the Lord pulled us. But the fact is, somewhere truth came in. And this morning, I've looked at a message. It's not my words, but something to Brother Jackson that ministered a long time ago. Truth without love is not love at all. And that love is not just any kind of love. If we don't have the love that we're going to read in the, next, in the next following verses, if we don't have that love, then you don't have truth. And if you don't have truth, you can't have the love. And that will eliminate a lot of things because coming out of the denominational world and even around sometimes you hear about, well, love. Well, yes, there's a human love. And it's a part of man, it's makeup, that even those that are not born again, they're, they're, they can love somebody or do wonderful things. And there's people that has different kind of natures. Some of them are pleasant, some of them are meek, some of them are, well, not so good. <laughs> you have the criminals and such like. But nevertheless, that love has nothing, nothing to do with the love of God. And when we say that we... To love one another, we are to love one another in the terms of God's love. The natural love will make you love the world, and if Satan gets his way, he'll drag you to the world, and you'll find a peaceful place 
that you, he'll get you to comp- he wants to get you to compromise on his word. All right. So love without truth, it's not love at all. It's only carnal love. And what is truth? First of all, we have to identify what is truth and what is love. And now if we want to go to the book of John, chapter 14. Starting around the 15th verse. Now here's Jesus is speaking. He's saying, if you love me, it was not pointing to the carnal love in, the, in man. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now we're going to see Jesus is going to use different words. He's going to use commandments. Later on he says word. And then he says sayings. And then he qualifies it. He says, they're not mine, but my heavenly Father. So, if Jesus is saying, if you love me, keep my commandments. And when we talk about the love of God or charity, it's in that realm, not the human love. Yes, we are all different in the natural of of whatever degree is in love that man has, depending on their nature. That's well and fine. But that has nothing to do with the love of God. So truth without love is not love at all. So if you don't have his commandment, it is saying you do not have the love of God. And love without truth is not love at all. Divine love is truth lived. Now how do I live truth? Well, to live truth, first of all, you have to receive truth. Through the child of God that's born again. It is God, the Spirit of God, that imparts to him divine truth. Even to the simple place where water baptism, going to Calvary, justification, sanctification, and the, the complete birth, if you want to. All these things comes from the word of God. If it is another word, then it is a false birth. It is a false love. So God's only concerned about the love that counts with him. Because when we have to give an account, he's going to require, how do we love him? And he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And he's not pointing to the Ten Commandments of the Old Testament. He's pointing to every word that the Lord, yes, Jesus, is speaking every word that the Father is giving him because it is the Father's word. And from the Old Testament, we know that how God deems that very important. He says, he holds his word even above his name. How's that? But sometimes, well, they don't love me. They don't come to see me. That's not the love that God's talking about. The love is the love of the word of God that's in your brother and sister. That word is not in the tares. We can love them from a human standpoint. That, Lord, that they would have an opportunity if they were to be God's children. But the love of God is within the family of God. Because only the family of God has the genuine, revelated word. All right. So as we go down here, it says, And I pray, and I will pray the Father, that he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Now the the Trinitarian says that. See, there's, there's, there's at least two persons here. The comforter is the Spirit of God. We all have one Father. And Jesus is not your Father. And you've heard the expression, 
Jesus will never be your heavenly father, and your heavenly father will never be Jesus Christ. Well, as that, as we saw the Godhead using just those simple terminology, so is it when we talk about truth and love. Truth without love is not love. It's carnal. And love without truth is carnal as well. So we need both. So how do we get that love? Well, if you love me, you keep my commandments. And the commandment that God gives us, we are to live it. Now, we're not going to go down the road walking around with a sign, I'm born again. I've been baptized. I believe in the blood of Jesus Christ. But the fact that in your being, that Holy Spirit takes that word and it's non-compromising to the true child of God, that's how you live it. It's a start. And may I ask, as God starts a person in the divine walk with him, he's going to add more word to that believer. But we see sometimes in the scriptures there's 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. If God has seen that I am just to be a 30-fold, a then God will raise me up in time going through I will only see 30-fold. You don't graduate from 30-fold to 60-fold or to 100-fold. So there is a potential. We have to realize in, diff in every one of us, we don't have all the same potential. Now, when I say 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold, we all see the same picture, but not in the same detail as someone else. And you can't go around saying, God, it's not fair. He knows our capability. And it's no sense me trying to hammer someone that's 30-fold to make, trying to make them 100-fold. I have to realize God has put it in his word that he's the one, it's his word, it's his church. He's the one leading the body of Christ. Yes, Jesus is the head of it. But the plan of salvation is through God Almighty himself. All right. 18. And I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while the world sees me no more, but you shall see me, because I live, ye shall live also. Now how do we see Christ today? Has anybody seen him? You see him through the revelated word. And if I see Christ as is part of a trinity, I am of a false word. But if I see him in the Godhead, then I have his word. And God will honor that living part. Now when it comes to living truth, there's two parts to this. Not that I want to divide it. It's all God's word. But then there's a certain part that the word will come to you to show you how you should live. And he says, if he gives you that word how you should live, then I should be walking in it if I love him. Now, a lot of preachers will say a lot of things, but it's what God has revealed to you, the individual child, whatever that word is, he's requiring us to walk into that. As much as it is humanly possible. And the love of God is perfected by you, walk, you and I walking in that truth. It's perfected to the degree that he saw you the part that you are in there. You're not perfect goody two-shoes, but you are perfect for that measure. While in this physical body, we will never come to scriptural perfection of everything that Jesus Christ is. Not to that measure, because we have a handicap, this fallen nature. It makes mistakes. It floods the tank. <laughs> All right? Now, I want to go to John. It's not too far from there. John chapter 15. I am the true vine, my father is the husbandman. He's the one, the husbandman is what takes care of things. 
Every branch that bears not fruit, he taketh away. Now, what is it to bear fruit? Now, I know Brother Jackson didn't put that part down, but I put it down this way here. Fruit without truth and divine love is not fruit at all. Fruit that God's looking for without divine truth and divine love, how God sees what it is in the scripture, is not fruit at all. It's just human efforts. And when we talk about, and they love the denominational world, and even today, even in different circles, they get mixed up with what charity, which is divine love, is. If I speak through tongues and men of angels and have not charity, oh, because I didn't love him, the person individually. You love your brother and sister because of the word that's in him. And if you don't have that divine love, then you're just sounding off. A lot of churches are sounding off. God's a trinity. You don't, there's no such thing as predestination. That's where this word lies into. So charity is divine love expressed. I'll go back to, yes, it's in John chapter 14, verse 21. He says, He that has my commandments and keepeth them is he that loves me. Is that talking about the, your human, carnal heart? It has nothing to do with that. Yes, it is a part of it, the human part, that can, it's a trait of the soul that can relate to it. But the love that we're going to express, God's love, it has to be based on his word. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. Not because you're a kind, meek person in the natural. You can go in the city of Moncton and find someone that's so nice, you can be pleasant to just a walk and talk with that person. He's ever so, so wonderful in the sense of if we got human love in mind. And if you're going down that road, you're missing what he's speaking about here. That's not love. And, and he that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him, and, we, and will manifest myself unto him. Well, I thank the Lord that he is. Why would he manifest himself unto you? Because he's going to give you more word, which involves more love, which involves more walking, developing more fruit. I wish that, he said, it says in a place in the scripture as well, I wish that you bear much fruit. Well, if you're going to bear much fruit, you're going to have much word. Now, saying that, and our mind sometimes goes back, well, what about Martin Luther? If God was requiring Martin Luther only to have the, the just shall live by faith, and he walked it, and in the days of that of simple truth and what God was restoring, they paid a heavier price if you didn't walk in it. Martin Luther could have had his neck cut off by the Catholic Church, but thankful that the that the king of Germany didn't like the Pope, and so he protected Martin Luther. And Martin Luther had, had been the king not there when he attached the 95 Theses to the door of the Gettingburg Church. They'd have hung him or courted him or did anything, but they couldn't touch him, and God knew it. And so with everyone that would accept that truth that God was bringing through that vessel of clay, and God honored that, and, it was, and God was the only requirement that they will be bride, fine linen, in, and they're in the bride of Christ. 
But we can't go to that part, well, if Martha and Luther only needs to have just by faith, then that's all I need today. No. You're walking in a different day. You're walking in a day where God's word has been plentiful. And it's not just the, day, the word of the past. Now remember, when Martha and Luther received the just to live by faith, that was active on ground while it was happening. Yes, there was other things. He, no doubt he saw or read from the scripture because he was a monk translating the Bible in his day in the Catholic Church. But God required this much. He didn't say, Martha Luther, now you, I want you to be, have the baptism in the, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and all these other things because God was restoring. But that early church now, if we go back to the days of the apostle, they were required not to walk only in the words of Jesus. Those that was in, let's say, 60 A.D., around when Paul was still on the scene, they had to walk in the revelation that Paul was bringing on ground. God does not want a child of his to say, well, stop in this period here, and God moves on with more truth, and that child don't want to move on. then there's something wrong. Either he could end up as maybe white robes or not even white robes at all. And that was, and God kept that church clean in those early days of the apostle. They didn't get by with believe what you want, take what you want, and, and I'm okay, and we're all, we're all going to heaven. They preached pretty close and pretty stern. Yet, Paul was a meek man too. Now, Peter was a little bit more outspoken because he was a fisherman. I don't want to speak against fishermen. But it just goes to show. Now, we're still in John chapter 14 here. And in verse 23... And Jesus answered and said unto him, now concerning Judas, not Iscariot, but it was Judas that was there at the time that he was speaking to them. He said, if a man love me, he will keep my words. Now we read that. People have read it all through the grace age. The denominational church says they... They use that same scripture. We keep his word. But they keep a past tense word. And most of the time they say false word. A false revelation. But when he says, if you keep my words, it's not singular. It's plural. And Jesus, yes, he spoke. In that early church, bringing new revelations to Peter, Paul, James, and all those apostles. But the same Jesus, through the Spirit, was speaking to them. It's speaking in this hour. He spoke through a prophet. He spoke through an apostle. And he's speaking through a fivefold ministry. Our danger is not what Peter and Paul preached, or Brother Branham preached, or Brother Jackson, because God has established those things, those people that sees those message. But what are you doing today? Is his word just as important today? Can you recognize it to begin with? And the only way you can recognize it is if you have the Holy Ghost in you. God is still speaking. So it's not just the words that he spoke when he walked here on earth, but it's the word that he spoke also in that early church and also in this last, if later seen, church age. Because otherwise, if it's not, then we'd have to say Jesus is not speaking today or hasn't spoken here at the end time. Now, when I say is Jesus speaking, it never changed when he walked here on earth. The words that I speak, they're not mine, but my heavenly Father. And see that you refuse not him that speaketh from heaven. 
Because those that refused it, because they refused the word for their day, they were cut off. Every move where God is speaking for their day, God makes a separation. Is it different in this hour? Oh, we've got to all come together. We have the fivefold ministry. The fivefold ministry will get together by the word. Not by personality. Not by, well, well let's agree on each other and let's, we'll, 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 uh, we'll check each other and see what's going on. God's going to bring this the way he's done it all the time. How was the early church established? He started with, first with Peter. Then it was time to go to Paul. Paul was that mouthpiece. Martin Luther, Wesley, Branham, Jackson, the fivefold ministry in this hour. All right. If a man love me, keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Now he goes on to verse 24. And he that loveth me not, keepeth not my saying. And sometimes they're sitting right among you, and they're not believing it. Pretending. That has happened all down through history. And he that loveth me not keepeth not my saying. The words which ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. These things I have spoken unto to you, being yet present with you, but the Comforter, which is none other but the Spirit of Almighty God, He's the one that can fill all the born-again vessels of clay. He's the spirit that fills the universe. He knows every thought. He knows, he knows all things. The Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send, because it's himself. And he takes a little portion of himself and puts it into every child of God. The Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name, and he shall teach you all things. All things that Jesus, when he walked here on earth. All things that the apostles spoke. What about the prophet in this hour? That's the Holy Ghost teaching. The apostle we had in this hour. The same thing. And he shall teach you all things and shall bring to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now that, I'm glad he put that part in there. Because sometimes we see a truth. And if we have not dealt with it for a while, he can bring it back to our memory and revive it, bring it alive. Not that you've changed, because in this moral body, as you get older, you tend to forget things like the water. All right? It was a reminder. Don't do that again. All right? So all these things. Now, I want to go to Luke chapter 8. Battery's dying. Okay. There, is that is still coming through there? Oh, I give he gave me the thumb up. That's good. I'm glad it's a thumb. So in Luke the eighth chapter.
And we're going to go to the 15th verse. But that on good ground. Now Jesus has been speaking about a parable about the different grounds that the word would be sown into. They, on good ground, are they which in an honest and good heart Having heard the word, that don't mean he heard it because you he heard somebody's voice. That inner voice, that comforter, makes real what he's speaking to you or to me. Hear the word and keep it. Not that, oh, well, it was nice this Sunday and then uh, what's on to the next, next Sunday and we forgot all everything about it. If he's speaking to you on a certain part of the word, then it's the responsibility is to you or me how we deal with that particular word, whether it is concerning your revelatory garment or your personal walk. And having heard the word keepeth and brings forth fruit with immediately. Patience, why? Because the word that you receive has to be tried and tested. And it's not just a testing for ten minutes. He'll bring things around your way to test what you received. And by us standing for whatever he's given you to receive, then you are living, you are a living example of that word. Is this strange to you this morning? I know I'm not usually in this area. But I feel it's important. Because sometimes you see things. You hear things. The love of God. If we don't really know and understand what it is, then Satan could pull the wool over your eyes. So now here he talks about how that in Luke that we bring forth with patience. So it's not immediate. Oh, we'll rejoice when the word comes in. Thank you, Lord, for uh, that was so beautiful. That, that just fits in with my soul. Praise God. And he doesn't, God doesn't say, well, that's well, you received it. That's all that's required. No, everything is tested. Wasn't Jesus given words that he was to speak when he was here on earth? And he was tested on everything that the Father gave him a commission to walk in. What is your my commission in this hour? To walk, to be part of this bride of Jesus Christ. And the bride of Jesus Christ is not going to live a hap-so-shod way of life. And you can't drag human emotions how you live your life. Let's say for a man, well, no, I'll be touching people if I go too close. Yeah, maybe I'll use this here. This is pretty well generic. Let's say I believe the Lord wants me to respect when, he, when I come and assemble together with my brothers and sisters. Oh, that's all that's required as long as I come with my brothers and sisters. Maybe it might be okay if I wear a muscle shirt. What do you think? I'm still coming with my brothers and sisters. I'm not forsaking the assembly myself. Somewhere I've lost sight of something. Now that don't mean we have to be dressed so holy like the, uh, the Amish and those other groups. You can go to the extreme in presenting yourself. But on the other side, you can be so loose because you and I are the representation ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
He wore a purple fine linen robe. Yes, it was given and made for him. But he didn't say, well, I'll just use this here on Sundays or whenever, and I'll just go any old clothes whenever he wanted to go. Whenever he was dealing with the word of God, I believe he presented himself in a proper manner. Now, are you trying to preach the law this morning, Brother Fred? No, but surely that Holy Ghost, if we allow him to... Don't let the preacher tell you what you need to do. If you know in your heart, there's a little voice that says, well, maybe I don't know for sure. Well, if you don't know for sure, check it out. What are we going to wait? Till the rapture's getting on, the half hour silence is here? When are we in the ready room? Now. Well, last week, after I finished last week, I said, well, I don't have any more. I just thought I would just, uh, I'll just, well, I'll just pick, okay, that, that'll do, there. No, it doesn't. And sometime at the last minute, God just drops something in. There's a pull in a certain direction. Now let's go to 1 John chapter 2. That's the epistles. And in the second chapter, in verse 3 of that second chapter of 1 John, And hereby we do know that we know him. You don't know him from your carnal intellectual mind. Get that out of your mind. If we are to know the Lord and his thoughts, his thoughts is expressed in the words that are written. We know that we know him if we keep his commandments. His words are worth saying. And that's, again, it's not the Ten Commandments. And he that says, I know him and keepeth not his commandment, is a liar. Wouch. The ouch you got to worry about is not the preacher or your next door neighbor or your fellow brother. It's the Holy Spirit himself. The comfort is inside. He'll let you know. And the truth is not in him. But whosoever keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God Perfect it. After we seen a while ago that it, through trials and tests, through patience. So the word's going to be instilled in you with patience. Let me use a, a, a carnal example. We got talking, Brother Ray was talking about how a man comes on a new job, you feel uncomfortable. And then the boss asks you to do something and, and then you... Walk around looking what to do and see if you're doing it right or not. And, and so sometimes you may have forgotten. And the boss says, well, didn't you know you should be doing this? Uh, this is how to do it. He'll help you. If, it's a, if he's a good boss, he'll help you out. But after you've done it a number of times with patience, you know your job. You know your work. You're doing what is required of you. That's the same thing with the Word of God. How many gets it right the first time when God asks you to do, bring something in your life? Don't raise your hands. I know the answer already, because mine's the same. So therefore, he says, and, but whosoever keepeth... His word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby we know that we are in him. 
Sometimes our mind thinks, well, somehow this, I've got to be transported and somehow I'm dumped right in there. No! You're in him because of the word, the expression, the thought. You have the same thought he has because he's given you his thought so you and me to walk into it. Now, you have a better understanding because the word love is so broad and in our human nature, it's so easy to attach, oh, oh, love, God's word. Never lose sight what his love means. And you can't have love if you do not have divine revelation. It's that simple. It takes away the human heart and puts it aside. The human heart has to be trained to love his word. And that now is his love, which is a higher love, than the human love that, that is in our makeups. Now, we love one another because of the word of God that's in us. And how can two agree together except they believe the same things? How can you agree with God unless you believe the same thing? Well, this is an hour we need to know the difference. Look at the world, what they're teaching on love. A preacher will get on, on those denominational churches sometimes, or those independent shows, uh, independent, independent evangelical service, if you want to. Oh, I love God so much. By just hearing him talk, he don't have God's love whatsoever. He's looking at it from the human standpoint. They never say, I love God so much because I'm keeping his word. That's a fake. And there's a whole lot of fake in the world teaching that very same thing. Satan has lulled his Church world to sleep with it. Because it sounds so nice to the human soul. Now to be nice to your neighbor, that's the, you ought to do that. But when we're talking about love, you can love him from a natural standpoint if he's a well-natured person. Well, that's not the love that God is expressing concerning the body of Christ. Better understand the difference. Are you understanding that this morning? So truth without love is not love at all. Love without truth is not love at all. It's only carnal love. And it sounds so good, too. If you want a good example of that, and I, I don't mean to pick on that brother that preaches that way, but Jerry Olstein. If you're falling in that kind of a love, and that's the love that you think is God's love, forget it. He's not going to be in no bride. He's not walking according, he's, used, he's preaching a compromised word. Because when we read the scripture, everything that John, the apostle of love, is preaching about love, he's speaking about the love of God's word that resides in the believer. Now, bring it a little closer. The love concerning our human walk, that is the love of God. 
has been preached, brought forth a long time ago. And it's how each child of God, as God gives him that word, to walk in the light to perfect that side for the inner person. But if that's all you're looking at, then you're not going in no rapture. Because that kind of outlook does not care what happened in this first watch, the second watch, and the third watch. What's in that first watch? It was God now opening up a brand new word. Seals were opened. That has nothing to do with your inner character. That has very much to do with the garment you're putting on. And if I only have Brother Branham's message, then I only have a garment up to here. Uh, uh, don't go too far with your imagination, please. I'm just expressing it. I have an undergarment, so don't worry. All right? But then, as God brought more revelated word, yes, there's things that was touched concerning the inner man. But a whole lot of it more was concerning now the garment that we're putting on more truth. And if the Lord saw fit to speak in Luke chapter 12 or 38, a third watch, then there's a word for this third watch that will now complete or bring about the completion of that full revelatory garment for our hour. It's not required for Martin Luther or the early church, but it is required for you and I in this hour. But I don't know everything, Brother Frank. Don't get nervous. Remember, it's what God gives to you. But when we reject what God brings, then yes, then you're on a slippery slope going the wrong way. If all I want is Brother Branham, you only got one third of the dress for this hour. If you're only walking in Brother Jackson, you've got two-thirds of the revelatory garment for this hour. God wants all of them. Or I'd have to say, if you don't believe that, then I'd have to say, then, then God's not speaking in this hour. Sevenfold light in this hour. Is that from heaven? Or is that from men? Look at the things that's been revealed to this hour compared to that early church. We don't deserve it. But I thank God for it. What a beautiful pictures that we see in this hour. We're not walking half blind. The denominations are walking blind because they have no clue what is about to happen to them in a few years up the road. But you and I have been blessed by God that he has given us these things. And that doesn't make you and I super spiritual more than the early church. That does, has nothing to do with it. First of all, it's not yours, it's his revelation. We can't claim, I can't claim, well, it's my revelation. No, it's his revelation. And if God spoke in those hours and he had to use men to do it, so will he be using men in this hour to speak as well. You don't look at the vessel, because if you got your eye on the vessel, Satan, I can tell you right now, he's going to trip you up. But if you've got that Holy Ghost in you, once a truth is expounded and opened, either you're going to see it or you don't. And the Holy Ghost will confirm this is true or this is not. You may not know everything about it. Like every revelation, it takes time as God's dropping things in. But God's looking in this guest room because we're at the end time. And he's holding 
this generation that we, that's living right now on what he has brought on ground. What gives you the authority to speak like that? Well, if nobody speaks like that, then there is no five-fold ministry. God has to use somebody to say something that wakes up this bride, that shows where she's walking, know the hour she's living in. Do we know everything? No. Do we have all revelation? No. I'm glad he's reserving things till the time we actually come to perfection. Because if we knew everything, we had every revelation today, I guarantee you'd be lazy and you'd go backwards. Because that's what happens when God doesn't feed whatever watch you're looking into. Once you stop feeding, you get weak. And stop feeding, people don't want certain things, and so they just draw back. And when you draw back, it's only a matter of time. People draw back. Well, they're preaching the same thing, you know. We've heard this four years ago, three years ago. There's nothing wrong with preaching the word again to revive it. But if there's nothing that's current, then the sheep will get fidgety. They'll stop coming to church. They'll start looking for other places, taking their rest. They make it to the point, well, I'm only going to go when it starts to get interesting again. And what happens there? They're making one major mistake. They're forsaking the assembly of themselves together. Is that only for the preacher? Now, it was just before my day, but there was a certain movement. They'd preach every second day of the week, and sometimes two or three sermons on Sunday. Well, that's torture. Because you can only absorb so much in a certain period of time. And... Now, I don't want to go over either. It's 22. But you, if anything I can impart to you this morning, and it's not what I brought, it's what Brother Jackson had brought way back. In 1978, of all things, it is part of our inner man. Truth without love is not love at all. And love without truth is not love at all. It's carnal. Now, you're not, we don't use that as a club on your brothers and sisters. It's for our personal understanding. We need to know what divine love is. If we don't, we are handicapped. And if... If this confuses you this morning, go to the scriptures. Dig into it. Listen to that message that was in 1978. Divine love is truth lived. Don't take my word for it. I don't want you to hang on my coattail. If I had my rather, I'd rather sit down. But then there's that burden well, praise the Lord. Maybe I've said enough for this morning. I don't want to. Sometimes if you say too much, you pull it right out again. So praise the Lord. So let's just stand at this time as you position to come in case someone has a need this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again, Lord, for your word. I just pray, Lord, that you would move on each one, Lord, to look into a deeper depth and higher height, Lord, concerning your divine love and truth. 
why I commit now the service in your hands. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Just start singing it. Shackled by a head, a burden. Praise the Lord. Yes, this walk is easy, receiving the word, but sometimes it's a little rough when the Lord puts, checks us to see how are we living, so praise the Lord.
But it's for our good, isn't it? If we're on the mountaintop, I guarantee you, none of us would grow. Let's just, oh, well, let's just stand this time. And Brother Ray, if you'd come and dismiss us the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your wonderful love to us. Thank you for meeting with us faithfully, Lord, as we walk this way. Heavenly Father, just dismiss your children now with your blessing. Give us traveling mercies. Keep us, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.